So this is December 2021, December, December 2021, question number three. Now, ladies and gentlemen, is there anybody who is able to remember? Yeah, anybody who is able to remember or rather who can define for us? So the last one is balance sheet, balance sheet, balance sheet, or a statement of financial position audit. A statement of financial position audit. So somebody, one, one sentence for this. What do you understand by system-based audit? What do you understand by system-based audit? What do you understand by system-based audit? straight away. Clement. All right. Now, Victor Mesema, ladies and gentlemen, that uh, under system-based audit from the word system, this automatically is an ICS-based audit. It's an internal control system based what year audit. This is when you audit the system only as the company has a strong ICS. In system based, they rely on ICS. Ladies and gentlemen, you are right. We are saying the most important thing that they're supposed to know under system based is that uh, as an auditor, I will not be looking at the risks of material misstatement. Here, I know that an organization is made up of what here? Several systems. Like if it's a college like this one, we know that we have got various subsystems, various subsystems, which in this case here make us thrive as a college. For example, we must be having a school fees management system. We must be having a teaching system, which of course makes sure that all teachers are able to come to teach you people on time ETC, right? When we used to have a physical class uh, school set up, we used to have a soldier at the gate to help us collect fees. That's a good system. It's a good internal control. So then what you will do as an auditor, ladies and gentlemen here, under system-based audit, you're going to target the systems. You're going to target the internal control systems of the entity. You appraise them, you check them out. If you realize that, uh, for example, this system is strong, right? It means that I will not be able to audit it intensively. And a system-based audit, ladies and gentlemen, I will do an evaluation of uh, the company's ICS systems. And of course, ensure that my audit procedures are put more in areas of uh, internal control weaknesses. Internal control weaknesses. Internal control weaknesses. So ladies and gentlemen, listen and a system-based audit, we are not concerned with risks. Here we are concerned or with the ICS. ICS which are working, then we limit. If they're working, we limit a lot. Uh, we limit the auditing procedures to be taken to areas that are, are working, right? Areas which are not working, ladies and gentlemen, are the ones now where we shall take more of our substantive procedures. So in short here, yeah, evaluate all the internal control systems of the entity and then ensure that uh, you take more of the audit, all right? More of the audit, substantive uh, procedures to those ICS that are weak, that are weak. How about the risk-based audit? Thank you very much. How about the risk-based audit? Risk-based audit, can somebody in this case here tell me something about risk-based audit? Risk-based audit. What kind of approach is this? You can even Google, you can even Google. They're not talking to me, they're not talking to me, they're not talking to me, they're not talking to me.
So remember, under risk-based, we shall not be looking at internal control systems. Uh -huh. Roger says, under risk-based audit, we look at business risks, not per se, really. Mm -hmm. I'm waiting. I'll not talk at all. Audit based on risk that business is exposed to. Victor Diamanza Kusema Hapa, you focus on high risk areas with more tests. I like that. You focus on high risk areas with more tests. Nicholas Kiprotich, focus on a high risk prone areas in an organization. In an organization. So ladies and gentlemen, what I normally see happening outside here in terms of risk-based audit, you will get auditors running to the financial statements. The auditors in this case here, ladies and gentlemen, will run to the financial statements. So in the financial statements, depending on the nature of uh, the elements which are there and depending on the company that is being audited, you realize in the financial statements, for example, when you look at the income statement, the income statement. So we'll be talking of something like sales. Sales is a risky area. Sales is what here yeah, is a risky area. This is an area that uh, directors of any company would want to play around with, right? Things like inventory. Things like inventory are what here yeah, are risky. So in this case here, yeah, we shall identify from whichever area, it could be business components or financial statements components, we look at them. Which ones are more susceptible to risks? Which ones in this case here will be understated easily or overstated easily? Those are the ones in this case here where we place more of our audit tests, yes. All right. Okay, great, great. Now from ladies and gentlemen, we go to the next one. The next one, of course, you are the ones who have told me that we have what we call uh, the balance sheet. The balance sheet. So under balance sheet uh, uh, audit, ladies and gentlemen, we basically zero in the balance sheet items. We are going to audit all the balance sheet, what here items without looking at which one is risky than the other. We shall audit everything under balance sheet. We shall audit the assets, total assets here. We shall audit our equity. We shall audit what here somebody, we shall audit our liability, our liabilities. Of course, using the various assertions. And then at the end of the day, if these are okay, we shall make a conclusion automatically that even the income statement and all the other financial statements are what here, they are okay. They are okay. They are okay. So under balance sheet audit, what do we do, ladies and gentlemen? Under balance sheet audit, we only focus on balance sheet, balance sheet items. We audit them. We audit them, right? We look for sufficient, appropriate audit evidence. In this case, here to be able to ascertain whether the items of the balance sheet are okay. If they're okay, we make a general conclusion that everything in that company is what here is okay. And then we have lastly, number four, the substantive procedures audit approach. Substantive procedures audit approach. What will you tell us about this? Now, ladies and gentlemen, this one here is uh, the old one, the old style of what year auditing, which came, which came to prove to be what here somebody very expensive, very expensive, very expensive, very expensive substantive, right? Here we do not look at, uh, for example, which item is risky, which one is not risky, no. Under substantive tests, ladies and gentlemen, what we shall do under substantive tests is basically to carry out like what we call sensors. It's like we are going for, a, it may not be exactly 100%. It's like we'd want to audit everything in the organization using the substantive procedures. Substantive procedures, if you can remember, the substantive procedures, if you can remember, we have here R-A-E-O-U, R-A-E-O-U. So under substantive tests, ladies and gentlemen, what do we do? Here we are going to, of course, have 
a lot of investigation over everything in the business, everything in the business, right? Without discrimination, it's a very expensive model, all right? So here we shall be auditing, auditing almost everything. If you look at the financial statements, all financial statements try to apply this analytical procedures and inquiries in this case with third parties. We have what we call inspection. We have what we call observation. Observation. We have what we call re-recalculation. We have what we call re-calculation like that. This is analytical. Analytical, analytical procedures. Analytical procedures. We have an inquiry, an inquiries. It is, it is an inquiry and third party. What here? Yeah, confirmation. So under substantive, substantive comes from the word substantial, substantial. So here you're going to investigate, you're going to audit substantially everything in the organization using this procedure. It's quite expensive because remember, if it is system-based audit, we will only audit defective systems. If it is risk-based approach, we'll only audit risky areas. Now, when you come to balance sheet audit, you only audit the balance sheet elements. So you're not going to audit everything as is the case for what here, somebody for substantive uh, tests, for substantive tests. I've got these notes. I'll be able to share with you these notes immediately after this class. However, what this examiner asked us and most students were not able to answer this, this examiner in December, 2021, I'll release a question number three. In question number three, explore the salient features that distinguishes a system-based approach from a risk-based approach to an audit. So what are the distinctions between system-based audit and risk-based audit? System-based audit, already there is something that has formed in my mind. There is something that has formed in my mind. I'm able to see some quite uh, distinguishing feature. Abracadabra. Our own game. So abracadabra, our own gay, our own gay. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I know you guys are typing. I'm so sure you guys are typing. Like Betty tells us, system focuses on ICS, while risk focuses on test to more riskier areas. I like that. I like that. I like that. Any other person in this case here who can give us? Any other person who can give us, any other person who can give us any other distinction, any other distinguishing feature between the two? Uh -huh. Hassan Nasema, auditing carrying out, carrying out on the system. Hassan is Jakwelewa. Hassan is Jakwelewa. Hassan, you know, there's an idea. Like, you know how you put these answers across here? Neza Kulete Shida. What the solution has. Betty, the system is for the system while risk is on risk. Betty, that is what can easily make you go down, Betty. If it's, it was war, Betty, that statement would have taken you down. I can assure you. I can assure you. Now, listen, the answer that uh, we have here, the answer that we have here, I would want to read it slowly. I don't know whether it's better you write the answer down or I send to you this thing. Although I want to type it, eh? I would not want it to be seen like it's coming eh, from me direct. No, I would want to have it typed. It will be typed by tomorrow. 
So like system-based approach, this is what your examiner said. A system-based approach is supported by some degree, by some degree of substantive testing, of substantive testing because of the unavoidable limitations or weaknesses in internal control systems. I'm repeating again, a system-based approach will be having some substantive testing because of the unavoidable limitations or weaknesses in internal control systems. Another dash, the amount of substantive testing, the amount of substantive testing will depend on the auditor's judgment, on the auditor's judgment about the effectiveness of internal controls. It is more cost effective. It is more cost effective than a full substantive testing approach. It is a more cost effective, it's more cost effective than a full substantive testing approach since, since more audit procedures, more audit procedures are executed on weak systems, on weak systems. Wakaja wakatuambia risk-based approach, risk-based approach, an assessment is made, an assessment is made of the likelihood, of the likelihood of material misstatements, of material misstatements. An assessment is made of the likelihood of material misstatements, another dash, Areas that are assessed as a high risk, areas that are assessed as a high risk are audited extensively. Another dash, low risk areas are given a low attention, a low attention. These are things you'll get immediately. No, no, this one I have to type it. Eh? Number two, they wanted us to give them factors influencing choice of audit strategy, factors influencing choice of audit strategy. You know, where's I'm always anywhere. You know, where's I'm always any part B. No part or A Roman two. Describe the factors that influence the choice of an audit strategy. Aha, uh -huh. Molina Cage wants me to go a bit uh, slow. If I start dictating these things, you write them down, I don't think we'll really be able to move. I, I would rather send this thing to you. I would rather we understand it high level and then you take up the thing of uh, reading and writing on your own from the handout which I'll send. Or rather, what do you think? What do you think is the best? What do you think is the best way forward? Would you want me to start dictating everything you write down? Hand out helicopter style. Una kama sayo sha juwa easy ine, at least to meshika shika, itakuwa easier because you know they can't repeat these questions. They can't repeat these questions. We pataki hand out you na kutosha. Yes, thank you very much. Right. So kama up wana tuliza, wana tuliza, wana tuliza kit raisi. Describe the factors that influence the choice of an audit strategy. Wala bo mulifanya la semester. Mulisema which factors? Pata potea. Sema mwaja mini kupatia tatu. Factors, ladies and gentlemen, that you will have to consider when you are doing your audit. Aha. Scope of the audit. Strength of ICS. Strength of ICS. Cost implications. The time. The level of risk. Size of the farm. I'll pick that one. Size of the farm. 
size of the farm. That's very correct. I'll pick that one. Size of the farm. I'll pick that one. Size of the farm. Now, as a gentleman, high level, high level helicopter style. High level helicopter style. What do we have here? The factors. Number one is the nature and the size of the client's business. Nature and the size of the client's business. Generally, a risk approach, a risk approach is best suited for large organizations. A risk approach is best suited for large organizations. And the balance sheet approach, balance sheet approach is suitable for small companies. Great. Another factor, the control procedures. The control procedures, somebody spoke of ICS, the control procedures and the control environment in place. The control procedures and the control environment in place. A systems-based approach, a systems-based approach is more suitable when there are strong internal control systems. Yeah, resources available, resources available, resources available resources available. Of course, if you've got a lot of resources, ladies and gentlemen, you will even go the substantive way and audit everything. Or rather, uh, audit substantially, uh, 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 do the voting. You do the voting. That will be very important, yes. Then we have somebody who is talking of what here? End user of the audit. End user of the audit. Here they spoke over the audit methods and the techniques favored, favored by the farm. By the farm. Of course, we know not, not by end user, the audit methods and techniques favored by the audit farm, favored by the audit farm. We know that big organizations, the big four, they always prefer what here? Yeah, Risk-based approach. They will prefer risk-based approach. Then we have another point, audit risk, a different point there, audit risk. We've said that the competence, the competence, etc, etc, etc. Aya, sasa, ni swali gani ngine mbao mungetaka tupitie juju kwa yu maswali ala semester? Swali gani wangetaka tupitie juju kwa yu swali ala semester? My, my point, ladies and gentlemen, is that uh, we should stop underrating this paper. If you look at some of the answers we are receiving here, they're not, of course, very bad. But you can see we really need to do what you put in, a lot of what here, efforts for us to be able to pass in this paper. The concept of you assuming that you know nothing. And even the nothing that you know, you know it what here, you know it wrongly. You know it wrongly. We have got to do quite a lot. We must do quite a lot. Especially those questions that I send to you on WhatsApp. Mujaribu atakama ni moja. Nikitu matano, ujaribu mbili, mi nitafurai sana. Nikitu matano, ujaribu mbili, nitafurai sana. Otherwise, nikiwa tengenezeo solution, notu kwa tengenezeo, but nikiwa tumie solution, uh, turudi kwa sela basi yetu sasa, turudi kwa sela basi yetu sasa jameni, jameni sela basi yetu leo, tunaitaji kusoma vitu mzuri mzuri sana. I can see five new messages. Question number two, money laundering is ahead of us, and money laundering, all of them, okay? So then if you want us to do all the questions, the best will be for me to give you the solution, 
you go through the solutions and of course with the questions that you did. And then of course, if there will be any issue that you would want us to discuss further, you can raise them and say, Mwalimu, this question, we did it. That way it will much better so that I can now make progress also with my syllabus, with my syllabus. I hope that is okay. I hope that is okay. Aya, so ukiangalia vizuri kwa syllabus yako jameni tuko na nini pale? Nikwambia ni subject ambayo inataka ujanja sana. Subject ambayo where is my book? Subject ambayo utapenda sana. Ndio hii. Just a minute. Ah, yeah. Great. Okay, so subsequent events is it to make you sana? Ah, something small that we did yesterday, which we have to recap for the sake of the students who are not with us yesterday, is here. Just a minute. 